All right, so now that we have some letter forms um, that we brought in, brought in from a, um, a downloaded typeface, and we've created outlines for them so that they're each individual vector assets, I can use my pencil tool and we can use all of our illustrator skills to modify that type, right? Now I want to set my pencil to be actually maybe even a little bit more accurate than what I had because this is a pretty wavy kind of hand done font, right? Or typeface rather. I can also tilt it, kind of get it close. I can widen it. And in some ways it's really cool to have those little paper texture holes cut in. It will make it seem more hand done, but it also means that I'll need to stay aware of that as I design it myself. Now remember, you always have to start and stop on the path with the pencil tool. So you sometimes have to do it in small little increments. There we go. And all these little holes are making it a little bit trickier to do what I want. There we go. We're getting there slowly. So you can see, without having to worry too much, I'm really modifying this type. <laughs> And yet it's going to work really beautifully for what I have planned. And by kind of starting with something that's already designed, it's going to have a consistency to it that maybe my own hand done type might not have. And at any time I can use a small selection tool and get rid of these little blips. And at any time I can use my eraser Especially if I make it pressure sensitive and I can put little nicks in it so it still looks kind of like that paper texture is coming through. All right, so I've got the A. Now remember, especially if you're going for kind of hand done type, let it be hand done. Don't try to be super fussy about fixing every little thing. It's not about detail, it's about it communicating clearly. But once I've finished a letter, I lock it and I go to the next letter and I build it first with the large selection tool. And the A is one of the more extreme examples, right? And then I start working on shaping the others. And at any time you can go back to the large selection tool and you can rotate, you can stretch, you can play with it. You can even play with um, the other transform op options. 
which are a little different than Photoshop. You go to Object and Transform, and you say Shear, and that this way you can distort it. Make sure you have Preview turned on, and you can play with slight angles. <laughs> As you can tell, it's pretty sensitive. But even one degree off of 360 gives me an effect. Right. That might be interesting. And these are all vectors, so even all these little kind of Swiss cheese holes are all perfectly clean. But any little debris I leave is also a problem. Okay, so I've got the A and I've got the B. If I want to do something fancier with the B, this is where hand done type really matters. I can cut out the space in it for the A. Ooh, look at that. How super fancy. Then it feels like you really know what you're doing. Next, lock that. Go for the S. Large selection tool. I might decide to drop the S down just because I have it sketched. And I like my sketch doesn't mean I have to be a slave to my sketch. And for those of you who are interested in graphic design, there's no better way to understand type design than to modify existing type. Especially if you base it first on your sketch and you kind of see what um, preferences you have that others don't have. For instance, I like to square off my S's in ways that type designers don't often do. So it means that they have verticals in the middle. I don't know why I'm not a big S-curve guy, but I'm not. All right. I'm going to punch a few holes in it. Try to have a really light touch. Again, just let it be hand done and try to overdo it. And the great thing about it being a vector file is you can keep tweaking it until you're happy. And it will always be clean. Well, just the right amount of unclean. Lock that. Now, every letter can be a challenge in typesetting. But you really pay attention to your first and last letters, right? They're what kind of carry the day. But having that sketch behind really does help. And the main thing I want you to learn is not to fight against the type's nature, right? If the type is a clean, modern type, you don't want to spend all your time trying to make it look more traditional and adding serifs. You know, instead, modify something that already has a little bit of decorative serif to it. Or if something's really evenly spaced all the way through, you don't want to waste all your time. It just depends on what you need, right? By, by right-clicking it, 
with the large selection tool. So when it's a type, so I'll go back to the one that, because I always do it as copies, right? So this is the one that's still a type tool. By right clicking it, you're able to create outlines. Of course, it's not showing right now. Oh, I have to select it first. All right. So by creating outlines, now I can actually push around the individual anchor points. So it's just like live tracing it. But it will do a better job than live tracing it if it were a JPEG of that type because it's it is, is already a vector. It's just giving me access to all those vector tools. Because typefaces are vectors. And if you want to be a contemporary typeface designer, maybe one of you will present on one for your final presentation. Whatever tools you use, whether it's Illustrator or not, because there are more specialized tools available for you, um, they do need to be vectors in order to work with all the different programs we use them for. All right. Whoops. Yeah, I do so much um, copy and pasting and kind of locking layers in Illustrator simply because that's the easiest place to make mistakes. Kind of selecting something you don't want or having it do something you don't want. But by creating outlines, you can see how you just have control over every spacing issue. And that's what type design usually comes down to. It's like, where are you using the space? I like to think of each letter as being submerged in a glass of water. And some letters displace more water than others, right? And so if there's a lot of water, like around the S, then I can have the S closer to the B and the U. But if it's something like a B that displaces a ton of water, I need to allow more space around it so that roughly the same amount of water is floating around each letter. That's one way to think of how you can deal with the kerning, the space between your letters. Especially if it's a really clean type solution, then kerning becomes incredibly important. One reason I like letterpress is because it has a lot of just the, the randomness of the art form embedded in it. So it's more forgiving by its nature. I'm even having to put kind of a bit of a wobble in my line <laughs> to be able to match these, this hand done type. Now, honestly, the way this type was probably designed was from a letterpress run of an alphabet looks like a pretty clean modern alphabet, but then taking the, the actual inked paper, scanning it, and then live tracing it into these vector shapes and turning it into a typeface. And there are really innovative and interesting ways that people make typefaces now. And you don't need to be like me. You don't need to choose as many letters. <laughs> I just liked this phrase, absurdity and association. I also like doing this in Illustrator because you'll see all the little pink guidelines that it provides you. It helps, helps you see how things are lined up with other elements. And you can always use your arrow keys as well for slight adjustments. I just keep forgetting you don't have to hit return. You just move to a different tool in Illustrator.
And just because I'm designing in his black type, it doesn't mean that I want.